Evening boys and girls, welcome back. So, um, all I've done recently is I put a little bit of etch primer on there, which is some of this stuff. Um, because obviously being metal, acrylic doesn't want to stick to it too terribly well. Um, and I changed my mind about putting this plate on the back here, so I stuck that on as well. I thought, yeah, go on then. Um, so I've put a bit of masking on and I'm going to give it a gloss varnish with this stuff um, in preparation for all the decals. Yay. So I've been waiting a couple of days because I ordered, after much searching, got these from Hannant's. Uh, let me see, well, that, is that showing up? It is a great big set of numbers and letters. I don't think that's going to show up on the camera, is it? Let's have a better, better look. Yeah, that's that's working. And the majority of them are in three millimetres. But then you've got some smaller ones down here. And this whole set was five pounds something. That's the details there and the serial number obviously it says 170 second scale but it obviously depends on what you're using it for and although you've got all the numbers so like so they number eight it's in various styles and some of them are stencil types some of them are you know with with the little gaps in where you'd hold the bit of paper up to the thing and dab the paint on uh, so that's the ones I want, so I can get the serial numbers done. Um, yeah, it took a little while to find those, but now they're in the stash. And these little ones here, I reckon they might just about be the right size to do number plates on any future sort of kits. So it'd be a handy little set that. Right, um, let's get spraying. Okie dokie. I'm back again. Um, so I've given it a coat of gloss varnish, only a thin coat. It's not terribly, terribly shiny, but should help with getting the decals on. And I've had a little thought. So this big decal here, which has two little holes in it to fit around there. And the air vents have got the bit of photo etch around them. So my thinking was once the, the decal's on, it's got to kind of fit around, up sort of over that and conform to it. And then if I've got to paint these afterwards, if I balls it up and get it all over the decal, yeah, a bit of a nightmare. So, yeah, because what I was thinking of doing was painting the whole thing. So I'll mask it all up and paint it. I thought, well, I'll give the decal a try. So, uh, I've only got two types of red. So I've got this one, 003 Model Air Vallejo, or this one, which is the Red Arrow Red 238 Humbrol. Um, I'm trying to see which is the nearest. So to my eyes, that one looks a little bit pink. <sighs> Whereas that one looks pretty much right. So I'm going to go with the Vallejo one. Um, and we'll see. I think it'll be a neater finish doing it this way. Um, what I'm going to have to do as well is... So that goes on like that. So this section here, so this side of the event I'm gonna to have to be careful not to get any red paint that side because that'll be white um, in fact I think what, I, what I'll do is I'll just do the photo edge bit so just that very edge there and that outer one there I should just put a bit of white on that just so if there is a little bit of gap around the decal you won't see metal through it so that's the plan let's see how it goes 
So just giving the air vents another coat. Could have put a bit of primer on that because it's taken a few coats for the red to cover it, never mind. Uh, fun bit, got the registration on the on the bonnet there. Took a little while, because obviously got to cut out each individual letter and number. Um, <laughs> and then you put them on, and of course the the water or the micro set makes the the letters and numbers want to move a little bit. And then because they're so close together, the water and the the the, the film that they're on. Each one moves the next one a little bit, so you're constantly shuffling them all up, and there's only just about enough room to fit them all on there. Um, but I think it looks okay. Just desperately trying not to touch him now <laughs> because I don't want to have to shuffle them all up again. But I think it looks okay. Once that's got a bit of uh, that varnish over it, I think that'll look all right. Uh, only other thing I've done is put a little dab of white on the the bits of photo etch. So I was just sort of thinking that if the decals are a little bit thin when they go on, because obviously a little red cross on a white background to go on, I'd rather it sort of showed through a bit of white rather than the metal. But I don't know. And I've done the same on the plate on the front there as well. So now I get on with all the, all the big ones. Except the, except the one on the roof there. So let's see how it goes. The other thing I found with the, these letters, I should just say, if you do end up buying these, they come off the the backing really, really quickly. Um, so what I was doing in the end, I wasn't bothering putting any water on them. I was just putting each individual letter or number on the bonnet and then just dabbing a bit of micro set on it with a paintbrush. And after a just a couple of seconds I was just moving it off the the paper onto the onto the truck because um, putting them in the water as soon as you put them in they started to float off almost, you know, almost straight away didn't even have time to sort of hook them out um, but they look really good I mean you can see that they're, they're covering up you know this is this is a dark colour it's going on to and I was a bit worried that they might be a bit thin, but they're covering it really nicely. So if you need some numbers and letters, um, like I said, I got these from Hanant's, Hanant, Hanant, and that's what they're called. So it's a recommendation from me. So let's go for this side one here. So just looking, I've got the, this one here as a reference. Um, which I'm guessing, you know, they would have been near as damn it the same size on on the RAF one. So just making sure I get the right ones because obviously there's lots of different sizes here. So number seven is the one that goes on the side. Uh, that one there. So just looking at the positioning of it. So it looks to be dead centre with that window there as a centre line and then it fits almost exactly between the bottom of the window and the bottom of the body so it should be fairly easy to line that up ha <laughs> he said so I've got my trusty slightly blunt knife, uh, knife to work it around with but what I tend to do is use that I've got a little little flat brush if that's got any movement in it yet there's all sorts of different ways of managing your decals but I quite like getting the brush underneath it Feels like it's a little bit more gentle that way. You're kind of carrying it rather than pushing it. I 
fun bit of lining it up. I don't really like touching them. I always feel like I'm going to tear them if I do that. Because I'm quite cack handed. So just looking at that by eye, that looks about right. It's just overlapping the bottom window frame, but it's only just above. It's like a little frame along the bottom there. It's only just off of that. So I'll try and move it down very, very slightly. Reminds me of the skin on the top of a rice pudding. Oh dear, oh dear. Let's see if I can salvage it with one of the other ones. So I've got these two here. So they're only slightly smaller. And that will fit on better. So I'm going to try those. Bit more microsol on there in the hope that that might help. So because this one's a little bit smaller, I shouldn't have the issue of it overlapping because it would have fitted perfectly between that line at the top and the bottom. Because I've got it ever so slightly wrong, that's where all my problems start, we'll try to move it. So hopefully this one will just fit nicely in between I won't give me any problems. Okay, that, I think that looked pretty good. Very slightly out. Just come on, just move up for me a little bit. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So, because I did those lines when I sort of did the weathering, I've got, got that handy line there as a guide, and it's pretty much straight horizontally and it seems to be equidistant from the bottom and the top um, and I've just sort of used that edge of the window there as a centre line I, mean, I could have gone that way a little bit and used that and that but as it's on I'm going to stop there <laughs> call it artistic license or something that's the beauty when you're doing one that isn't um, straight out of the box I'm just making up the numbers and everything on this this is just a a vague RAF interpretation if you like it's not a specific vehicle and then I can do what I like rather than trying to make it accurate which it suits me because I don't like being super duper accurate with things because this is for my enjoyment. And I enjoy making stuff up. I'm going, yeah, it looks nice. I'm happy with that. Rather than making it, you know, <laughs> for me, I, I, can, I can get a little bit carried away with stuff. So I don't want to have to go into the, the history books to try and find exact things oh shut up Barry you're waffling um, yeah for me it's about fun and I'm having fun it doesn't matter if it's not accurate to some people that's part of the hobby is getting it as, as exact as possible and that's absolutely brilliant you know hats off to you you can do it Brilliant representation of something. Wonderful. Not for me to tell you what to do, is it? 
likewise for me, is about enjoying the process. And I am. And if it goes wrong, oh, who cares? Doesn't matter. Not gonna throw me teddies out the pram. slightly wonky, not too bad, but there was a slightly, oh, 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 just got to come down a bit, my fingers are shaking, like, oh, don't mess it up, okay, that could come down a little bit more, but it's straight, so I'm going to leave that there. Okay, I'm just going to give that another coat because that seems to have dried and then I'll come back to the decals. Right, just going to get another brew. <sighs> okay, put this one on the front. That one went on okay. Even though I sort of stuck my thumb in it, I managed to sort of flatten that out. That looks all right. Okay. Um, now I needed a roundel to go on the front mud guard. So I had a look through the, the stash and found this old beast, this old matchbox siskin. And the uh, very old decals, I think that's mold growing on there. But I managed to cut one out and that's having a, a good soak. So with a bit of luck that'll survive enough to do this little job. Luckily this, um, there's two options. So if and when I ever get around to making this, this is the one I was gonna go for. So I've cut the one out of that. So I'm not ruining the whole kit just for, for one decal. <laughs> 1974, it was uh, copyrighted. <laughs> Peter Oxley, if you're watching, sorry, mate. Peter's a bit of a matchbox fan. As am I. I used to love a matchbox kit. They weren't the highest quality. But they were cheap as it cheap as anything. Is that even gonna come off? <laughs> I don't know that even wants to come off the paper. Let's give it a bit longer. Um Yeah, if you're a bit a bit younger than me, which you know, there's a fair chance you might be, I suppose. Um back in the in the seventies really, and in the eighties, matchbox were a uh, I suppose they were kind of high street wise, they were the main competitor for Airfix. And the beauty of them was they were cheap and they were sort of stocked everywhere. So whereas Airfix, you'd probably go to a, well, you can get me in Walworths and in modeling shops, but Matchbox ones seem to appear everywhere in paper shops and little convenience stores, that sort of thing. And um, I'm just showing you this one. I'm, I'm waiting for that deco to dry. Uh, this thing of making, of moulding them in different colour plastics. The idea being that you didn't need to paint them because apparently that looks just like that. Yeah. Um, but they were fun little kits. I used to sort of flop together in an afternoon and they'd be right. Used to enjoy them. 
and they did some some bigger stuff as well on occasion. Um, trying to think what it was I built. It was a bigger kit they had. What was it? Come off, come off the paper. Come on, off you get. Just hoping I can get the brush underneath the, the film just enough to tease it off. Is that the paper? No. Is that the paper dissolving? Or is that the decal? I think the paper's coming apart. Oh dear. Oh no, no, I think that's it. Just uh, get off. Really thick. I'm not sure that might still have a layer of paper on it. I'll make it out. Let's stick it on, see what it looks like. We'll just get it off again if it looks awful. Yeah, it's got the paper stuck to it. That's no good. <sighs> okay, let's raid the stash again, see what else I can find. Going well, isn't it? Back in a minute. Okay, so that one refused to come off. So, I've had a look through a stash of very, very old kids. Uh, that was no good. So, I'm hoping by raiding last year's club kit, the 2022 Airfix Modelers Club. Um, if you, if you don't know, every year you're in the club, you get an exclusive kit. And this was it. It was a pair of hawks. Um, which I don't think I'll never get round to making. I made one a few months ago that was just a, an ordinary one. Built them loads of times in the past. But there we go. Yay! I'm sure I can rob one of those. So I'm going to try that one there because it looks like it doesn't have a, a film around the outside of it. It's turning out to be a bit of an epic, this. I'm curling up, not coming off the film. Raiding other boxes for part, but at least being recent, these won't <laughs> won't be ruined by years and years of being in a mouldy box somewhere. Well, I hope they won't. <clears throat> Talking of decals. Um, Got a, my missus got me a, a 124th Harrier, but not the the fairly recent version, um, and not the vintage classic exactly. She got me an original one from 1974 um, from a charity shop, and it's a kit that means a lot to me for reasons I'll go into when when I actually put this together. But um, as Airfix were re-releasing it, I thought, well, they'll have some decals. I wonder if I can buy them. So I got in touch with them, and bless them, they sent me a set for free. So thank you again, Airfix. Yeah, can't, 
can't fault that for customer service. You get a kit and thick end of 50 years later, you complain about the decals and they send you a new set. That's, um, that's pretty amazing customer service. So come on, here we go. about right isn't it mm. now a little bit further down I think yeah that'll do yeah yeah that'll do right so apart from the dreaded one on the reef so this is now had three coats of paint I think that'll have to do it um there's some tiny little ones for the tyre pressures to go on. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to bother with the ones on the back doors. So I think that's about it. So, the big beast. <sighs> Wish me luck with this one. Because I'm not going to get a second chance if I get this one balled up. <laughs> Which is pretty likely, as you can see. I'm uh, having a bit of a day of it today. Still, that one went on all right, despite my clumsiness. It's settled itself down, and I haven't even put any uh, micro sun on it yet. I'll just give everything a coat of that once I'm uh, once I'm done for the evening. And uh, it can all settle down overnight. Okay, here goes. A little bit like wallpapering, isn't it? Except when I do wallpapering, I've normally got a few rolls spare, so when I inevitably cock that up, I've got a chance to sort it out, but nope. I have no more spares. I can't nick any more out of this kit. I suppose the only option I have is paint it. Mm. Here we go. Maybe I should dub on some suspenseful music at this point. Okay. Well, this is no sort of uh, wondering if it's lined up because they tell you where it needs to go by having the air vents in those little holes. So, uh, just going to be really gentle with this. Not gonna rush it. So after this episode, all I've got to do is the final bit of weathering. And uh, I said before, I've ordered a, a set of weathering clay kind of wash things. Um, I haven't arrived just yet, so when they do, 
I should be trying them out. And then, the thing is, now I'm starting to wonder what the next kit's going to be. Got a few knocking about. Got that Harrier I mentioned. <clears throat> uh, which I kind of wouldn't mind doing next. Although it's, it's not the best kit in the world. Bit, bit of a challenging build, people call it. Um, got the art royal, but that's going to take ages, so I'm, I'm putting that off because it's such a big, big kit. It's about two foot long or something. Um, lots and lots of parts, and they're all really fiddly. So I'll probably hang on until I get some new glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Um, got a few little ones. I've got the, um, yeah, I've got a, a job lot off eBay a while back of the old hanging bag airfix kits. And I thought it might be fun to do some of them. Obviously the decals will be useless and the kits will be, you know, not the best quality because they weren't back then but it'd be fun to build something really really you know a really old kit because um, you know the whole reason for this channel is uh, for the nostalgia element so starting off on a, a brand new release kit kind of doesn't set the scene but Like I said way back, this is ambulances are nostalgic to me personally because it used to be my job. And um, my granddad was a medic. My dad and my other granddad were in the RAF. So there's, you know, there's a loose connection. Um, and those little bag kits, I mean, they were around when I was little and I started doing these originally. But I mean, they were old kits even then. Uh, I'm not one for having a stash. I'm not a collector. I get things that are kind of mean something or you know, have some interest. And the job lot was just it was too good to be to be missed really. It wasn't that any of them particularly took my fancy. But uh, maybe I'll do one of them next because it'd be a fairly quick build. Just a bit of fun. Uh, what else have I got? Just looking over my shoulder. Um, yeah, they, they are. They are. The, there's a load of um, mostly airfix aircraft, and I'm kind of not really fancying a, a, another 172 aircraft because that's. I'll do one of the really old kits just for the fun of it being really old. I'm mean, talking sort of. Actually, I'll go and get them. Let's have a look. Here we go. So, Gloucester Gladiator. Look at that. How old is that thing? Even have a just gonna undo it just to see if I can see a, a date on it. There we go. 
So if you've never seen this style before, they used to be hung on pegs in Woolworths. Um, as simple as you get a bag, piece of card folded over the top, a bit about it. And uh, yeah, that was it. I can't see a date on it. I mean, that's got to be 1950s. And what else is in here? Oh, so, a Gosling, Grum and Gosling. Same style. Look about the same sort of age. And, uh, I don't know what's in here. A Hawker Hunter. Another really old one. I mean, look, when I was a kid in the 70s, they, but you still have the ones in bags, but they didn't look like that. Typhoon. Oh, yeah, proper old. And then what we got here? Stuka. Focke Wolf 190. All the same sort of style and age and then a Lockheed Lightning so uh, yeah, I think I might do one of maybe a couple of those just for the crack anyway back to uh, back to tonight so where are we up to so yeah that's gone all right there's a couple of little wrinkles just around the air vent but I reckon when I put the microsol on, leave that overnight, that should sort that out. Got that round on there. So all I've got now is the little red crosses on the front and back and a little number that goes on there. Uh, and that's it. Okay, I shall just quickly do them. Right, just finishing off for today. So, just stuck the the numbers just above the wheels, tire brushes. And I've done the crosses on the back and the front, and the number four on that plate down there. So that's it. That's all the decals I'm doing. Um, so now I'm just going to stick a bit of microsol on. There's just a couple of wrinkles in this one at the top here, so I'm hoping that will sort it out overnight. I've only used this a couple of times, and um, yeah, it was amazing. I, was, I don't know what they put in this stuff, but having sort of seen other people use it and recommend it, well I'll give it a go and left a pretty wrinkled decal um, and I thought oh, that's a, I'm going to have to scrape it off and it was all bubbly and wrinkly and looked awful come back the next day absolutely perfect so I don't know what it what it's made of, what it does exactly, but it seems to kind of soften up the the decal, and it all sort of sits in any little grooves or dents or anything, and it takes the shape of it. Brilliant stuff. Yes, there's a wrinkle there, a couple of wrinkles around the edge, a little bit there, just sort of around the air vents. But uh, yeah, see how it goes. Anyway, I shall finish them off and I'll call it a night. Uh, and I'll be back once I've got the weathering set and I'll have a play with that. So uh, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.